Last Thursday, Paul Goldsmith, the latest Justice Minister of New Zealand, signed off on extraditing Kim Da Kam to the United States to face trial for multiple copyright charges related to his involvement with Mega Upload. Now, when someone has taken half a world away from their country of residence to face criminal charges in a country that's foreign to them, you would think that this would only be reserved for really severe crimes that resulted in loss of life, maiming, or extreme property damage to many, many people. But that's not what Kim.com did. He's not a terrorist. He's not even a cyber terrorist that disrupted a hospital or critical infrastructure. The only thing that he's guilty of is creating one of the best file sharing services that the world has ever seen. I doubt that many Gen Z or younger viewers really know about Mega Upload or who Kim.com is. And if they do, they probably just know him as the guy who paid off Lizard Squad to get Xbox Live turned back on after they had hacked it. But Mega Upload really was the best file sharing application on the web before the US Department of Justice seized it back in 2012. Mega Upload was founded in 2005, and at its peak, it had over 25 petabytes of storage, 50 million plus visitors per day. It was the 13th most visited website on the internet. And when you combine its immense popularity with the nature of the service, that led to Mega Upload consuming up to 4% of global internet traffic at its peak. It's really difficult to put into perspective how crazy that is, especially to someone who doesn't know what the internet was like 10 or 20 years ago before stuff was much more centralized and people really only visited four or five unique websites in any given day. But Mega Upload consumed about the same percentage of traffic that Disney Plus does today at 4.5% of global bandwidth. And pretty much every household with small children and daycare centers and elementary schools, like all of these facilities have at least one Disney Plus subscription and it's probably actively streaming all day on at least one TV within any of these buildings. So hopefully that gets the idea across. Now, as you probably figured out from the description of Mega Upload and the fact that its founder is being charged with copyright violations, a lot of people used, and still to this day, continue to use Mega.NZ for media piracy, and in some cases, much more vile stuff that we might discuss later. But none of this was done by Kim.com directly. He just created the service. Now you might argue that he's still responsible for what gets put up there because it's his service, but with end-to-end -end file sharing and chat services or any other service that lets people exchange data in an encrypted fashion, there really is no way for the operator of that service to know what's being shared and let alone stop specific pieces of media from being shared. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about YouTube, Instagram, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, etc. All of these services have the same kind of abuse problems. Now, there's some things that they can try to do to mitigate the abuse of their services, like YouTube has this very overzealous copyright detection bot that tries to prevent copyright violations. But that bot also gets abused to steal revenue for intellectual property that people don't even own in some cases, and those bots also still get bypassed, which is why you can find pirated streams of Family Guy, King of the Hill, the latest movies, and all other kinds of pirated or even illegal videos that get shared on this platform every single day. With OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive, these companies really have no way of knowing what you upload if it's been encrypted. So pirated and illegal content gets shared through those services all day, every day. 
And I know that Meta is in a bit of a media scandal right now about CP and other illegal stuff being traded through all of their apps, Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, and probably Threads too. But none of these companies face legal repercussions for that illegal content and illegal material. And all they really can do from a technical standpoint is delete it whenever it gets reported. And this is the same policy that Mega Upload had. When a studio reported one of their movies uploaded to Mega illegally, or someone reported CP uploaded to Mega, the media would get removed. But none of the founders of those other services that are so similar to Mega are being charged for copyright violations. None of them are being extradited to the United States. So why Kim.com? Well, for one, Kim was one of the first and most successful internet entrepreneurs in this cloud storage space. And even though he never did any piracy himself, he made millions of dollars selling premium subscriptions to a service that some people use for piracy. So it's just like with the Silk Road case where its founder is spending life in prison for creating a service that let people sell drugs on the dark web despite him never selling drugs himself. Because when you make millions of dollars doing something that the feds don't like, they're gonna come at you the hardest and throw the book at you. But Kim's case is even more ridiculous than Dread Pirate Roberts with the Silk Road because Kim wasn't drug dealing. At best, he was data dealing. <laughs> so there's not even a public health argument to be made against him. Now, of course, piracy shouldn't even be a crime in and of itself because it creates no tangible loss or destruction to a person or their property. If you copy a file, then the original file still exists completely unaltered. People might argue that if a person can download media for free, then they wouldn't pay the creator for that media to consume it, which means that the creator is losing a sale. But you could just as easily argue that pirated media creates new fans that you wouldn't have otherwise. If the only choices were to pay $20, $30, $40 to go see a movie or to listen to a new album or just never consume that media, then a lot of people would choose not to consume the media. So piracy can create new fans that you wouldn't have otherwise who might buy concert tickets or memorabilia. You know, there's so many other ways to create revenue that are connected to the production of media. And I know with a lot of music artists, they really don't even make any money off of their music. Like the only reason they're even making albums at this point is to advertise for their t-shirts or their concerts or whatever. And I can't tell you how many times I've pirated a movie and then watched it on my computer. You know, obviously my computer screen isn't that big. I just have a 27 inch monitor. And then I enjoyed the movie so much that I'm like, hey, I'm actually gonna go pay for this in theaters now and watch it on a big screen, possibly even watch it in IMAX and have surround sound and all of that. So again, piracy creates a lot of new fans and it lets people suss out the media first before they then go and consume it the expensive way. And another potential factor in why the feds are going after Kim so hard is his statements that he's been making on social media. He's been doing a lot of wrong think by tweeting clips from Infowars, being critical of the DNC, Biden, Kamala, and the global conflicts that the United States is supporting in Israel and Ukraine. Although personally, I think that Kim might be trying to cozy up to Russia so that he could potentially flee there when New Zealand finally sends the men with guns to forcibly mega upload him to the United States. If it worked for Snowden, it could easily work for Kim.com. US authorities claim that mega upload has cost film studios and record companies more than $500 million in lost revenue. But there's absolutely no way to verify this and a lot of these companies like Disney have already lost larger amounts of revenue by shoehorning politics into their movies 
that they don't even believe in themselves just so that they can try to appeal to woke people. Turns out that people don't like it when the pandering is this obvious. So, unfortunately, Kim's case is going to be another mask-off example of what the U.S. legal system is really for, which is protecting Uncle Sam's rich buddies in Hollywood and big tech. There are zero provable victims in this case, yet a German-born New Zealand citizen is being extradited to the United States to be tried for internet crimes that were allegedly committed by a business that's incorporated in Hong Kong that he used to be affiliated with. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the land of the free.